Yo, 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 what is up everybody? Chris here from Fake Sports News, back at it again with another video. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a quick update as to what happened today at Day 3 of CDL Champs. Today's matches were absolutely incredible, and thank god we didn't have anyone lag out, but there was a little bit more controversy, more on that in a second. Of course, T2P came to play today. You know, formal plays no games when it's champs time. Same can be said for the man, the myth, the legend, Seth Scump Abner. Scump was going crazy today. Formal was playing very well. Um, of course, I believe he was either the second or third best KD on the team. The Twins, their KD was pretty low, but of course they played a very, very confident New York subliners. Subliners dominated them in both hard points. Well, they dominated the first hard point. The second hard point was a lot closer, but Subliners definitely took both hard points convincingly, and they look to be the better hard point team today. Now, the controversy that came into play today was that our good friend over at CDL Intel, shout out to Crone, the GOAT, he uh, tweeted out that the actual page for the matches had the live scores being updated. So everyone found out ahead of time what the scores for map 1 and uh, subsequently map 2 were, and didn't look too pretty for Chicago. So some people were doubtful of it, and even some pros started getting at Crone, even though the man was just reporting on what he saw, he did absolutely nothing wrong, and there was no direct channel for him to communicate with the people from the CDL, so, I mean, you can't really get mad at the guy who reports on literal intel. I mean, his account is literally called CDL Intel. The man is doing his job. He's reporting on intel, and, you know, there's no channel for him to submit these things. Other than that, the series was incredible. Of course, we had no one lagging out because the matches were pre-recorded today and they aired later. Um, the matches between Subliners and Huntsman and Florida and Toronto, respectively, were very, very good, very entertaining, and honestly, they were really fun to watch. Starting off with Huntsman, of course, they lost the opening hard point. They took the search and destroy. They beat New York Subliners in round 11 for the burritos, even though... Pretty much no one got burritos. There were like a few people who got burritos. One of my one of my boys from uh, our betting server, he won burritos. Shout out to Rain. And uh, yeah, so the burrito thing was cool. Um, to those of you that won, GG, of course. Same with the game fuel. Um, I know some people have won the game fuel, but you know, I, I would like to win some, some free game fuel. I don't want to keep paying for it, you know? So yeah, hats off to everyone that won that, but the matches were great. Um, of course, map three, Chicago and New York went down to the, the wire. I believe it was a five point difference when it was all said and done, maybe four points. It was extremely close, extremely, extremely close. Just a couple ticks separated the two, but it was an incredible domination. Normally domination is kind of a snooze fest. It's what we all in the community agree is the designated snack break, but it was a great dom, went down to the wire. Both teams played very well and it was back and forth the, the entire time. And the hard point, of course, it was also very back and forth as, as it was on Hackney. And at this point in the game, Hackney is very, very down to the wire now, just because teams have figured out how to break tire shop more effectively. It's not like you could really chain P1 and P2 together as easily as you could before, where it was just a free 120 seconds because teams knew how to kind of cheese the spawns a little bit and, you know, keep that P1, P2 uh, secured for a long while. Now it's a little bit easier to break just with game balancing and, you know, teams learning how to play the map a little bit better, a little bit more efficiently for their play style, etc, etc. So that matchup went down to the wire. Of course, the New York Subliners took it, and that pushed us to Game 5, where the man, the myth, the legend, Seth Skump Abner took over. The king crowned himself once more, and he said, hey, it's champ season. I'm a champs player. Everyone wants to talk about Matthew Formal Piper. But you forget about Seth Scump Abner, the king? How dare you all forget about the king? That's what Seth had to say. Hey, I didn't say it. That's what the man said in the game. He let his gameplay do the talking. So Scump, of course, reasserted himself as the king. He said, hey, this is my game. I run this game. Call of Duty should be called scump duty in my opinion. St. Scumptrograd, you know what I'm saying? That's what he said on the map. Hey, not me saying it. It was, it was Seth. If you want to get mad at somebody, get mad at him. Tell him to not go off or something. But yeah, anyways, guys, you know, I'm hyped. Um, you guys know I'm a Huntsman fan. I have been a Skump fan for literally 10 years at this point. So I'm extremely hyped. I love seeing him succeed. Same can be said for Formal. Been a fan of Formal since he came onto the scene in Ghosts 
made the switch from Halo because I started in Halo. So, you know, I always love to see Halo players come over. Shout out to all the Halo guys. We are elite. But, uh, yeah, Huntsman won. Uh, super awesome matchup to watch. New York Subliners, they also looked really good. Um, of course, I did have some doubts after watching them play Minnesota. But I just think Minnesota has improved that much in the month or so since we last saw them. So I think that their matchup with OGLA will be very, very tightly contested tomorrow. And I think realistically Rocker could take it, but more on that in a few minutes. Of course, in our second matchup of the day, we had the Toronto Ultra taking on the Florida Mutineers. And kind of unsurprisingly, the Mutineers lost to the Ultra. The Ultra have really been in rare form lately. They really turned things around at the end of the year when they got their roster really figured out and finalized with Cami, of course, Kleenex, Methods, Classic, and Bantz. Those five guys, they just have the synergy, the teamwork, and the timing, it seems. I mean, they're all around the map. They're all just playing so selflessly, and they play so well together. It's just hard to beat them. Um, they just game plan well. They play well, and they're firing on all cylinders at the right time. They've just finally hit their peak at the right time in the year i mean if you want to peak you don't want to peak like the paris legion did in the beginning um i mean you prefer to peak as they are now the paris legion are peaking again at the end of the year when it really matters so in terms of those two teams i respect what they did they were playing the long game said hey champs is way more valuable to us this is where we make our money and yeah i, I respect it so shout out to the toronto ultra for really turning things around of course, they took map one against Florida. They, I mean, they beat them pretty convincingly on map one. Map two, of course, Florida won that 6-4. It was a very good showing for the Florida Mutineers. Great bounce back, exactly what they needed. The domination, of course, was also very close between these two teams. I believe this one was also maybe four points. It was super close. And then, of course, we had the hard point, which was a two... No, excuse me, it was a one-point game. Um... I'll play you guys the clip here. It was absolutely insane. They've done enough. The reinforcements should get there, but a little bit quicker on the reinforcements for Ultra. Somebody's got to get the angle to shut that down, and it may have been Sky that's been able to do it. Havoc seems to have been alive in this point forever, but it's Skies that continues to find kill after kill. Now sliding out is Havoc. You're still alive if you're Mutineers. You can technically win it here and look towards top blue. You've got Frosty in position to maybe get some cutoffs. He can cut off these reinforcements, but Kleenex is able to drop them. It's all going to come down to these final seconds. If Mutineers can hold and get us to a map five, Havoc doing what he can through the smoke. Ultra, though, able to get in. Now, no one can win it here. No one can win it Look here. There's spawns. not enough time. It's all going to come down to the rotation. Ultra are now in position to close this out. Mutineers have got to rally over. 249, 249, Ultra are in, Ultra do it. They couldn't get it closed out on first, but the rotation, enough to win. As you can see, the series was an absolute nail biter. It could have gone to game five, but Florida just didn't get the lucky tick. And realistically in game five, I still favor Toronto to take it all. Even though Florida did beat them in the first search, I feel like Cami probably would have put the sniper away and they would have played a little bit differently on the round, excuse me, on the map five, and they would have taken it. But regardless, Toronto move on to tomorrow. They looked great, and I think they'll continue to keep the ball rolling. Looking ahead to tomorrow's matches, of course, we start out with the London Royal Ravens taking on the Paris Legion. Personally, I think that the Paris Legion have a good chance to take it, um, but the London Royal Ravens, they basically, the gloves came off. Uh, Scraps, he tweeted out earlier today, he was like, screw it, I'm putting on auto attack sprint, I'm not going to just, you know, allow everyone to break the gentleman's agreements, and I'm just being a gentleman about it, you know, he's like, hey, I'm going rogue, if, if it's chalked, it's chalked, like, this is the end of the year, people are, you know, using the Dom glitch, in the case of Paris, people are using auto attack sprint, as people have accused Classic from the Toronto Ultra of doing, so he's just like, hey, gloves gotta come off, we're trying to win this bread, let's get this bread, boys, and you know what? I respect it. So, Scraps, I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, brother. Hopefully that the London Royal Ravens, I hope that they have a, a better chance tomorrow against Paris Legion. Um, I mean, it just kind of sucks that teams are resorting to these tactics instead of just kind of playing their game. Um, but hey, it's like I always say, human nature, if you give people the opportunity, then they're going to take it. So, I think London, now that 
there is kind of an equality of inequality in the, the landscape, if you will, and the gentlemen's agreements have been thrown out the window, I think that will allow them to just play their game, and I think ultimately they will beat Paris. But I'm not 100% sure of that. Paris have improved considerably, and they've beaten some pretty good teams. So I wouldn't hold my breath. I think this one will be a doozy for sure. But I do favor London just because they have the personnel. And I think that now that the gloves are off, I think it'll make a huge difference. Of course, in our next matchup, we have OGLA taking on the Minnesota Rocker. And this one, man, this one kind of makes my head hurt. Um, Honestly, with Kenny getting booted the other day, I don't know what to expect from OGLA. I think there is potential that they could play really well because technically we never really saw them playing with five men on a stable connection. So we haven't really seen the full OGLA at full speed. Honestly, I think that Rocker had a good chance with the way they played Subliners. Subliners played Huntsman really tight, and Huntsman, of course, are a top team. Subliners are also a top team. Um, And Rocker looked to be regaining momentum. So I really don't know. But Ogla, I mean, what can what can't be said about Ogla? They are one of the teams that we are looking to to make a loser's bracket run. So this matchup will be really big. Personally, I think I might sit this one out just because it is so volatile and I'd have to do so much hedging to kind of, you know, protect <laughs> the risk. Um, so I'd advise you guys to probably avoid tomorrow's matches if you're going to be betting. But if you want to go... I guess the safest way possible, I would say Paris and Optic. I think those are the two safest, but I don't know, man. Minnesota, Minnesota, they just, the way they played Subliners, it it really opened my eyes. I think they're really trying to make a run this weekend and trying to salvage their year after they just kind of fell by the wayside. So I, I don't know. They're playing with a serious chip on their shoulder. And same can be said for, of course, the London Royal Ravens. They've had a less than stellar year, and I'm sure they'd like to really turn things around. So in these elimination matches, I I really don't know what to expect. Of course, I favor Paris and Optic, but anything can happen tomorrow, so I'm really not too sure. And then, of course, in our last matches of the day, we'll have the Dallas Empire taking on the Toronto Ultra, and we will also have the Chicago Huntsman taking on Atlanta Faze. So basically we have four matches where it's completely unclear who's going to win as both teams are pretty evenly matched at this point. I think the Dallas Empire will most likely beat the Toronto Ultra tomorrow, but the Toronto Ultra have been on a different level and they really just seem to be hitting their stride in this game. So there's no telling how high they can really go this weekend and next weekend subsequently. And I don't know, I just... I get the feeling that they're going to keep pulling off these upsets until we believe them. So, I don't know, man. Dallas, though, it's it's just so hard to count out Krim and Clay at champs. And Hook as well. Hook has always been a guy who thrives under pressure. He just doesn't care, it seems. Um, he's a very, you know, he's, he's a good guy. But he doesn't really let it get to him, the pressure. So, I, I don't know. I think Dallas will probably win it, all things being considered. But... If Toronto win, I wouldn't be surprised either. They've been just taking it to everybody for the last few weeks. So we'll see what happens favoring Dallas, but who knows. Of course, our last match is going to be Huntsman versus FaZe. Uh, We're getting that rematch. Of course, the last time it ended with a 3-0 for the Huntsman side. You know, I wasn't complaining. Either way, I am very happy as FaZe is my local team, and Huntsman is just my, you know, favorite team, of course, because of Hector, Scump, Formal, um, etc. So, it's going to be a great match. Um, All the matches tomorrow are going to be absolutely insane. It's going to be a great day of COD action, and I don't know that I'll be betting tomorrow, if I'm being honest with you guys. I think I'm going to play some tiny slips. I'm going to do one super parlay. I'm going to say Dallas, Paris, and Optic just because I think the Chicago phase match is too volatile. I think with Huntsman, I really don't know what to expect. Of course, they almost lost in New York subliners. Their hard point didn't look too great, but I know they started scrimming immediately after their matches were done, so maybe they're really trying to fix things quickly, and they're going to figure out what they did wrong and fix it. 
And on the side of FaZe, we haven't seen these guys play since sometime in July. So I'm really not sure what to expect from them. I'm sure that, of course, RJ and Crowder have been going over strats meticulously, and they've been going over everything. So I think FaZe will be well game planned for tomorrow's matchup, especially since they have faced Huntsman, and they've probably been game planning to face Huntsman knowing that NYSL wouldn't necessarily get past them per se. So it should be an interesting matchup without a doubt. I don't really want to tell you guys to tail my bets because I am extremely uncertain of what will happen tomorrow. And Toronto getting through really kind of threw a wrench in things, if you will, just because it's a little bit harder to gauge their power ranking in comparison to everyone else. Of course, Florida has fallen out of form in the current meta, but... Toronto, they seem to only be getting better, and they just pull out these crazy victories, one after the other. Of course, that last map against Florida really just drove that point home. I mean, 250 to 249, it literally can't get closer than that. It's not possible. So, we'll see what happens. I think Dallas versus Toronto is going to be the craziest series of the day, if, I, if I'm being honest with you. I think FaZe Huntsman, I think it has the potential to be quite one-sided. I think one team could come out hotter than the other and just smoke them just because those teams are so talented. And, you know, when you're not getting it right at that level, it's just, it's hard. It's really hard to get anything going. And you can't really wing it as much as you can with, like, the middle of the pack kind of teams. So when we see our juggernauts go head-to-head, -head, it'll really just tell us a lot. I do think that this will end up being the top four, what we see in the winners' semifinals right now. I think that Chicago, Toronto, Dallas, and Atlanta will reinsert themselves back into the top four, even no matter who gets knocked down into losers. I think they'll win their way out and make their way back to the top four. So we'll see what happens tomorrow, guys. I know this video is extremely, extremely long, but the, the action is going to be that incredible and today was just that good that I had to really take my time and kind of explain things but yeah guys I will definitely be bringing you more live updates on Twitter of course be sure to follow us for betting tips and signals if you would like them uh, of course make sure to follow us on Instagram like comment and subscribe and of course use code FSN for 10% off products at mypire.com and yeah, guys, we got some really exciting stuff coming in the next few days, weeks, slash months. So be on the lookout for that. And I will catch you tomorrow with another update telling you guys what happens at day four of CDL playoffs. Yeah, guys, that'll just about do it for me. So I will catch you on the next video. Once again, this has been Chris from Fake Sports News signing off. Hope you have a wonderful morning, noon, or night, wherever you may be on this beautiful planet. And I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.